chapters one through five of the first book of the kings from the young's literal translation of the bible this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or how to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by mark penfold chapter one and king david is old entering into days and they cover him with garments and he hath no heat and his servants say to him let them seek for my lord the king a young woman a virgin and she hath stood before the king and is to him a companion and hath lain in thy bosom and my lord the king hath heat and they seek a fair young woman in all the border of israel and find abishag the shunammite and bring her in to the king and the young woman is very very fair and she is to the king a companion and serveth him and the king hath not known her and adonijah son of haggith is lifting himself up saying i do reign and he prepareth for himself a chariot and horsemen and fifty men running before him and his father hath not grieved him all his days saying wherefore thus hast thou done and he also is of a very good form and his mother bare him after absalom and his words are with joab son of zeruiah and with abiathar the priest and they help after adonijah and zadok the priest and benaiah son of jehoiada and nathan the prophet and shimei and rei and the mighty ones whom david hath have not been with adonijah and adonijah sacrificeth sheep and oxen and fatlings near the stone of zoheleth that is by enrogel and calleth all his brethren sons of the king and for all the men of judah servants of the king and nathan the prophet and benaiah and the mighty ones and solomon his brother he hath not called and nathan speaketh unto bathsheba mother of solomon saying hast thou not heard that adonijah son of haggath hath reigned and our lord david hath not known and now come let me counsel thee i pray thee and deliver thy life and the life of thy son solomon go and enter in unto king david and thou hast said unto him hast thou not my lord o king sworn to thy handmaid saying surely solomon thy son doth reign after me and he doth sit on my throne and wherefore hath adonijah reigned lo thou art yet speaking there with the king and i come in after thee and have completed thy words and bathsheba cometh in unto the king to the inner chamber and the king is very aged and abishag the shunammite is serving the king and bathsheba boweth and doth obeisance to the king and the king saith what to thee and she saith to him my lord thou hast sworn by jehovah thy god to thy handmaid surely solomon thy son doth reign after me and he doth sit on my throne and now lo adonijah hath reigned and now my lord o king thou hast not known and he sacrificeth ox and fatling and sheep in abundance and calleth for all the sons of the king and for abiathar the priest and for joab head of the host and for solomon thy servant he hath not called and thou my lord o king the eyes of all israel are on thee to declare to them who doth sit on the throne of my lord the king after him and it hath been when my lord the king lieth with his fathers that i have been i and my son solomon reckoned sinners and lo she is yet speaking with the king and nathan the prophet hath come in and they declare to the king saying lo nathan the prophet and he cometh in before the king and boweth himself to the king on his face to the earth and nathan saith my lord o king thou hast said adonijah doth reign after me and he doth sit on my throne for he hath gone down to-day and doth sacrifice ox and fatling and sheep in abundance and calleth for all the sons of the king and for the heads of the host and for abiathar the priest and lo they are eating and drinking before him and they say let king adonijah live and for me me thy servant and for zadok the priest and for benaiah son of jehoiada and for solomon thy servant he hath not called if from my lord the king this thing hath been 
then thou hast not caused thy servant to know who doth sit on the throne of my lord the king after him and king david answereth and saith call for me for bathsheba and she cometh in before the king and standeth before the king and the king sweareth and saith jehovah liveth who hath redeemed my soul out of all adversity surely as i swear to thee by jehovah god of israel saying surely solomon thy son doth reign after me and he doth sit on my throne in my stead surely so i do this day and bathsheba boweth face to the earth and doth obeisance to the king and saith let my lord king david live to the age and king david saith call for me for zadok the priest and for nathan the prophet and for benaiah son of jehoiada and they come in before the king and the king saith to them take with you the servants of your lord and ye have caused solomon my son to ride on mine own mule and caused him to go down unto gihon and anointed him there hath zadok the priest and nathan the prophet for king over israel and ye have blown with a trumpet and said let king solomon live and ye have come up after him and he hath come in and hath sit on my throne and he doth reign in my stead and him i have appointed to be leader over israel and over judah and benaiah son of jehoiada answereth the king and saith amen so doth jehovah god of my lord the king say as jehovah hath been with my lord the king so is he with solomon and doth make his throne greater than the throne of my lord king david and zadok the priest goeth down and nathan the prophet and benaiah son of jehoiada and the carathite and the pelathite and they cause solomon to ride on the mule of king david and cause him to go unto gihon and zadok the priest taketh the horn of oil out of the tent and anointeth solomon and they blow with a trumpet and all the people say let king solomon live and all the people come up after him and the people are piping with pipes and rejoicing great joy and the earth rendeth with their voice and adonijah heareth and all those called who are with him and they have finished to eat and joab heareth the noise of the trumpet and saith wherefore is the noise of the city roaring he is yet speaking and lo jonathan son of abiathar the priest hath come in and adonijah saith come in for a man of valour thou art and thou bearest good tidings and jonathan answereth and saith to adonijah verily our lord king david hath caused solomon to reign and the king sendeth with him zadok the priest and nathan the prophet and benaiah son of jehoiada and the carathite and the pelathite and they cause him to ride on the king's mule and they anoint him zadok the priest and nathan the prophet for king in gihon and are come up thence rejoicing and the city is moved it is the noise that ye have heard and also solomon hath sat on the throne of the kingdom and also the servants of the king have come in to bless our lord king david saying thy god doth make the name of solomon better than thy name and his throne greater than thy throne and the king boweth himself on the bed and also thus hath the king said blessed is jehovah god of israel who hath given to-day one sitting on my throne and mine eyes seeing and they tremble and rise all those called who are for adonijah and go each on his way and adonijah feareth because of solomon and riseth and goeth and layeth hold on the horns of the altar and it is declared to solomon saying lo adonijah feareth king solomon and lo he hath laid hold on the horns of the altar saying let king solomon swear to me as to-day he doth not put to death his servant by the sword and solomon saith if he becometh a virtuous man there doth not fall of his hair to the earth and if evil is found in him then he hath died 
and king solomon sendeth and they bring him down from off the altar and he cometh in and boweth himself to king solomon and solomon saith to him go to thy house chapter two and draw near do the days of david to die and he chargeth solomon his son saying i am going in the way of all the earth and thou hast been strong and become a man and kept the charge of jehovah thy god to walk in his ways to keep his statutes his commands and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of moses so that thou dost wisely all that thou dost and whithersoever thou turnest so that jehovah doth establish his word which he spake unto me saying if thy sons observe their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul saying there is not cut off a man of thine from the throne of israel and also thou hast known that which he did to me joab son of zeruiah that which he did to two heads of the hosts of israel to abner son of ner and to amasa son of jether that he slayeth them and maketh the blood of war in peace and putteth the blood of war in his girdle that is on his loins and in his sandals that are on his feet and thou hast done according to thy wisdom and dost not let his old age go down in peace to sheol and to the sons of barzillai the gileadite thou dost do kindness and they have been among those eating at thy table for so they drew near unto me in my fleeing from the face of absalom thy brother and lo with thee is shimei son of gera the benjamite of bahurim and he reviled me a grievous reviling in the day of my going to mahanaim and he hath come down to meet me at the jordan and i swear to him by jehovah saying i do not put thee to death by the sword and now acquit him not for a wise man thou art and thou hast known that which thou dost to him and hast brought down his old age with blood to sheol <sighs> and david lieth down with his fathers and is buried in the city of david and the days that david hath reigned over israel are forty years in hebron he hath reigned seven years and in jerusalem he hath reigned thirty and three years and solomon hath sat on the throne of david his father and his kingdom is established greatly and adonijah son of haggith cometh in unto bathsheba mother of solomon and she saith is thy coming peace and he saith peace and he saith i have a word unto thee and she saith speak and he saith thou hast known that the kingdom was mine and towards me set their faces had all israel for reigning and the kingdom is turned round about and is my brother's for from jehovah it was his and now one petition i am asking of thee turn not back my face and she saith unto him speak and he saith uh, speak i pray thee to solomon the king for he doth not turn back thy face and he doth give to me abishag the shunammite for a wife and bathsheba saith good i do speak for thee unto the king and bathsheba cometh in unto king solomon to speak to him for adonijah 
and the king riseth to meet her and boweth himself to her and sitteth on his throne and placeth a throne for the mother of the king and she sitteth at his right hand and she saith one small petition i ask of thee turn not back my face and the king saith to her ask my mother for i do not turn back thy face and she saith let abishag the shunammite be given to adonijah thy brother for a wife and king solomon answereth and saith to his mother and why art thou asking abishag the shunammite for adonijah also ask for him the kingdom for he is mine elder brother even for him and for abiathar the priest and for joab son of zeruiah and king solomon sweareth by jehovah saying thus doth god to me and thus he doth add surely against his soul hath adonijah spoken this word and now jehovah liveth who hath established me and causeth me to sit on the throne of david my father and who hath made for me an house as he spake surely to-day is adonijah put to death and king solomon sendeth by the hand of benaiah son of jehoiada and he falleth upon him and he dieth and to abiathar the priest said the king to anathoth go unto thy fields for a man of death thou art but in this day i do not put thee to death because thou hast borne the ark of the lord jehovah before david my father and because thou wast afflicted in all that my father was afflicted in and solomon casteth out abiathar from being priest to jehovah to fulfil the word of jehovah which he spake concerning the house of eli in shiloh and the report hath come unto joab for joab hath turned aside after adonijah though after absalom he did not turn aside and joab fleeth unto the tent of jehovah and layeth hold on the horns of the altar and it is declared to king solomon that joab hath fled unto the tent of jehovah and lo near the altar and solomon sendeth benaiah son of jehoiada saying go fall upon him and benaiah cometh in unto the tent of jehovah and saith unto him thus said the king come out and he saith nay but here i die and benaiah bringeth back the king word saying thus spake joab yea thus he answered me and the king saith to him do as he hath spoken and fall upon him and thou hast buried him and turned aside the causeless blood which joab shed from off me and from off the house of my father and jehovah hath turned back his blood on his own head who hath fallen on two men more righteous and better than he and slayeth them with the sword and my father david knew not abner son of ner head of the host of israel and amasa son of jether head of the host of judah yea turn back half their blood on the head of joab and on the head of his seed to the age and for david and for his seed and for his house and for his throne there is peace unto the age from jehovah and benaiah son of jehoiada goeth up and falleth upon him and putteth him to death and he is buried in his own house in the wilderness and the king putteth benaiah son of jehoiada in his stead over the host and zadok the priest hath the king put in the stead of abiathar and the king sendeth and calleth for shimei and saith to him build for thee a house in jerusalem and thou hast dwelt there and dost not go out thence anywhere and it hath been in the day of thy going out and thou hast passed over the brook kidron thou dost certainly know that thou dost surely die thy blood is on thy head and shimei saith to the king the word is good as my lord the king hath spoken so doth thy servant do and shimei dwelleth in jerusalem many days and it cometh to pass at the end of three years that flee do two of the servants of shimei unto achish son of maaka king of gath and they declare to shimei saying lo thy servants are in gath and shimei riseth and saddleth his ass and goeth to gath unto achish to seek his servants and shimei goeth and bringeth his servants from gath and it is declared to solomon that shimei hath gone from jerusalem to gath and doth return and the king sendeth and calleth for shimei and saith unto him have i not caused thee to swear by jehovah 
and i testify against thee saying in the day of thy going out and thou hast gone anywhere thou dost certainly know that thou dost surely die and thou sayest unto me the word i have heard is good and wherefore hast thou not kept the oath of jehovah and the charge that i charged upon thee and the king saith unto shimei thou hast known all the evil that thy heart hath known which thou didst to david my father and jehovah hath turned back thine evil on thy head and king solomon is blessed and the throne of david is established before jehovah unto the age and the king chargeth benaiah son of jehoiada and he goeth out and falleth on him and he dieth and the kingdom is established in the hand of solomon chapter three and solomon joineth in marriage with pharaoh king of egypt and taketh the daughter of pharaoh and bringeth her in unto the city of david till he completeth to build his own house and the house of jehovah and the wall of jerusalem round about only the people are sacrificing in high places for there hath not been built a house for the name of jehovah till those days and solomon loveth jehovah to walk in the statutes of david his father only in high places he is sacrificing and making perfume and the king goeth to gibeon to sacrifice there for it is the great high place a thousand burnt offerings caused to ascend doth solomon on that altar in gibeon hath jehovah appeared unto solomon in a dream of the night and god saith ask what do i give to thee and solomon saith thou hast done with thy servant david my father great kindness as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and thou dost keep for him this great kindness and dost give to him a son sitting on his throne as at this day and now o jehovah my god thou hast caused thy servant to reign instead of david my father and i am a little child i do not know to go out and to come in and thy servant is in the midst of thy people whom thou hast chosen a people numerous that is not numbered nor counted for multitude and thou hast given to thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people to discern between good and evil for who is able to judge this thy great people and the thing is good in the eyes of the lord that solomon hath asked this thing and god saith unto him because that thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thee many days nor asked for thee riches nor asked the life of thine enemies and hast asked for thee discernment to understand judgment lo i have done according to thy words lo i have given to thee a heart wise and understanding that like thee there hath not been before thee and after thee there doth not arise like thee and also that which thou hast not asked i have given to thee both riches and honour that there hath not been like thee a man among the kings all thy days and if thou dost walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commands as david thy father walked then i have prolonged thy days and solomon awaketh and lo a dream and he cometh into jerusalem and standeth before the ark of the covenant of jehovah and causeth to ascend burnt offerings and maketh peace offerings and he maketh a banquet for all his servants then come in do two women harlots unto the king and stand before him and the one woman saith o my lord i am this woman are dwelling in one house and i bring forth with her in the house and it cometh to pass on the third day of my bringing forth that this woman also bringeth forth and we are together there is no stranger with us in the house save we two in the house and the son of this woman dieth at night because she hath lain upon it and she riseth in the middle of the night and taketh my son from beside me and thy handmaid is asleep and layeth it in her bosom and her dead son she hath laid in my bosom and i rise in the morning to suckle my son and lo dead and i consider concerning it in the morning and lo it was not my son whom i did bear and the other woman saith nay but my son is the living and thy son the dead and this one saith nay but thy son is the dead and my son the living and they speak before the king and the king saith 
this one saith this is my son the living and thy son is the dead and that one saith nay but thy son is the dead and my son the living and the king saith take for me a sword and they bring the sword before the king and the king saith cut the living child into two and give the half to the one and the half to the other and the woman whose son is the living one saith unto the king for her bowels yearned over her son yea she saith o my lord give to her the living child and put it not at all to death and this one saith let it be neither mine or thine cut it and the king answereth and saith give ye to her the living child and put it not at all to death she is its mother and all israel hear of the judgment that the king hath judged and fear because of the king for they have seen that the wisdom of god is in his heart to do judgment chapter four and king solomon is king over all israel and these are the heads whom he hath azariah son of zadok is the priest elihoreth and ahiah sons of shisha are scribes jehoshaphat son of ahilud is remembrancer and benaiah son of jehoiada is over the host and zadok and abiathar are priests and azariah son of nathan is over the officers and zabud son of nathan is minister friend of the king and ahishar is over the household and adoniram son of abda is over the tribute and solomon hath twelve officers over all israel and they have sustained the king and his household a month in the year is on each one for sustenance and these are their names ben hur in the hill country of ephraim ben dekar in makaz and shaabim and beth shemesh and elon beth hanan ben hesed is in aruboth hath soko and all the land of hefer ben abinadab hath all the elevation of dur tafoth daughter of solomon became his wife baana ben ahilad hath taanach and megiddo and all beth shean which is by zartana beneath jezreel from beth shean unto abel mohola unto beyond jokneam ben geber in ramoth gilead hath the small towns of jair son of manasseh which are in gilead he hath a portion of argob that is in bashan sixty great cities with wall and brazen bar ahinadab son of iddo hath mahanaim ahimeaz is in naphtali he also hath taken basamath daughter of solomon for a wife baana ben hushai is in asher and in aloth jehoshaphat ben parua is in issachar shimei ben elah is in benjamin geber ben uri is in the land of gilead the land of sihon king of the amorite and of og king of bashan and one officer who is in the land judah and israel are many as the sand that is by the sea for multitude eating and drinking and rejoicing and solomon hath been ruling over all the kingdoms from the river to the land of the philistines and unto the border of egypt they are bringing nigh a present and serving solomon all days of his life and the provision of solomon for one day is thirty cores of flour and sixty cores of meal ten fat oxen and twenty feeding oxen and a hundred sheep apart from hart and roe and fallow deer and fatted beasts of the stalls for he is ruling over all beyond the river from tiphsa and unto gaza over all the kings beyond the river and he hath peace from all his servants round about and judah dwelleth and israel in confidence each under his vine and under his fig tree from dan even unto beersheba all the days of solomon and solomon hath forty thousand stalls of horses for his chariots and twelve thousand horsemen and these officers have sustained king solomon and every one drawing near unto the table of king solomon each in his month they let nothing be lacking and the barley and the straw for horses and for dromedaries they bring in unto the place where they are each according to his ordinance and god giveth wisdom to solomon and understanding very much and breadth of heart as the sand that is on the edge of the sea and the wisdom of solomon is greater than the wisdom of any of the sons of the east and than all the wisdom of egypt and he is wiser than all men than ethan the ezrahite and heman and calchol 
and darda sons of mahol and his name is in all the nations round about and he speaketh three thousand similes and his songs are five and the chief one and he speaketh concerning the trees from the cedar that is in lebanon even unto the hyssop that is coming out in the wall and he speaketh concerning the cattle and concerning the fowl and concerning the creeping things and concerning the fishes and there come out of all the peoples to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth who have heard of his wisdom chapter five and hiram king of tyre sendeth his servants unto solomon for he heard that they had anointed him for king instead of his father for hiram was a lover of david all the days and solomon sendeth unto hiram saying thou hast known david my father that he hath not been able to build a house to the name of jehovah his god because of the wars that have been round about him till jehovah's putting them under the soles of his feet and now jehovah my god hath given rest to me round about there is no adversary nor evil occurrence and lo i am saying to build a house to the name of jehovah my god as jehovah spake unto david my father saying thy son whom i appoint in thy stead on thy throne he doth build the house for my name and now command and they cut down for me cedars out of lebanon and my servants are with thy servants and the hire of thy servants i give to thee according to all that thou sayest for thou hast known that there is not among us a man acquainted with cutting wood like the sidonians and it cometh to pass at hiram's hearing the words of solomon that he rejoiceth exceedingly and saith blessed is jehovah to-day who hath given to david a wise son over this numerous people and hiram sendeth unto solomon saying i have heard that which thou hast sent unto me i do all thy desire concerning cedar-wood and fir-wood my servants bring down from lebanon to the sea and i make them floats in the sea unto the place that thou sendest unto me and i have spread them out there and thou dost take them up and thou dost execute my desire to give the food of my house and hiram is giving to solomon cedar trees and fir trees all his desire and solomon hath given to hiram twenty thousand cores of wheat food for his house and twenty cores of beaten oil thus doth solomon give to hiram year by year and jehovah hath given wisdom to solomon as he spake to him and there is peace between hiram and solomon and they make a covenant both of them and king solomon lifteth up a tribute out of all israel and the tribute is thirty thousand men and he sendeth them to lebanon ten thousand a month by changes a month they are in lebanon two months in their own house and adoniram is over the tribute and king solomon hath seventy thousand bearing burdens and eighty thousand hewing in the mountain apart from the heads of the officers of solomon who are over the work three thousand and three hundred those ruling over the people who are working in the business and the king commandeth and they bring great stones precious stone to lay the foundation of the house hewn stones and the builders of solomon and the builders of hiram and the giblites hew and prepare the wood and the stones to build the house the end of chapters one through five recording by mark penfold chapters six through eleven of the first book of the kings from the young's literal translation this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter six and it cometh to pass in the four hundred and eightieth year of the going out of the sons of israel from the land of egypt in the fourth year in the month of ziph it is the second month of the reigning of solomon over israel that he buildeth the house for jehovah as to the house that king solomon hath built for jehovah sixty cubits is its length and twenty its breadth and thirty cubits its height as to the porch on the front of the temple of the house twenty cubits is its length on the front of the breadth of the house ten by the cubit is its breadth on the front of the house and he maketh for the house windows of narrow lights and he buildeth against the wall of the house a couch round about even the walls of the house round about of the temple and of the oracle and maketh sides round about the lowest couch five by the cubit is its breadth and the middle six by the cubit is its breadth 
and the third seven by the cubit is its breadth for with drawings he hath put to the house round about without not to lay hold on the walls of the house and the house in its being built of perfect stone brought thither hath been built and hammer and the axe any instrument of iron was not heard in the house in its being built the opening of the middle side is at the right shoulder of the house and with windings they go up on the middle one and from the middle one unto the third and he buildeth the house and completeth it and covereth the house with beams and rows of cedars and he buildeth the couch against all the house five cubits is its height and it taketh hold of the house by cedar wood and the word of jehovah is unto solomon saying this house that thou art building if thou dost walk in my statutes and my judgments dost do yea hast done all my commands to walk in them then i have established my word with thee which i spake unto david thy father and have tabernacled in the midst of the sons of israel and do not forsake my people israel and solomon buildeth the house and completeth it and he buildeth the walls of the house within with beams of cedar from the floor of the house unto the walls of the ceiling he hath overlaid with wood the inside and covereth the floor of the house with ribs of fir and he buildeth the twenty cubits on the sides of the house with ribs of cedar from the floor unto the walls and he buildeth for it within for the oracle for the holy of holies and forty by the cubit was the house it is the temple before it and the cedar for the house within is carvings of knobs and openings of flowers the whole is cedar there is not a stone seen and the oracle in the midst of the house within he hath prepared to put there the ark of the covenant of jehovah and before the oracle is twenty cubits in length and twenty cubits in breadth and twenty cubits is its height and he overlayeth it with gold refined and overlayeth the altar with cedar and solomon overlayeth the house within with gold refined and causeth it to pass over in chains of gold before the oracle and overlayeth it with gold and the whole of the house he hath overlaid with gold till the completion of all the house and the whole of the altar that the oracle hath he hath overlaid with gold and he maketh within the oracle two cherubs of the oil tree ten cubits is their height and five cubits is the one wing of the cherub and five cubits the second wing of the cherub ten cubits from the ends of its wings even unto the ends of its wings and ten by the cubit is the second cherub one measure and one form are to the two cherubs the height of the one cherub is ten by the cubit and so is the second cherub and he setteth the cherubs in the midst of the inner house and they spread out the wings of the cherubs and a wing of the one cometh against the wall and a wing of the second cherub is coming against the second wall and their wings are unto the midst of the house coming wing against wing and he overlayeth the cherubs with gold and all the walls of the house round about he hath carved with openings of carvings cherubs and palm trees and openings of flowers within and without and the floor of the house he hath overlaid with gold within and without as to the opening of the oracle he made doors of the oil tree the lintel side posts a fifth and the two doors are of the oil tree and he hath carved upon them carvings of cherubs and palm trees and openings of flowers and overlaid with gold and he causeth the gold to go down on the cherubs and on the palm trees and so he hath made for the opening of the temple side posts of the oil tree from the fourth and the two doors are of fir tree the two sides of the one door are revolving and the two hangings of the second door are revolving and he hath carved cherubs and palms and openings of flowers and overlaid with straightened gold the graved work and he buildeth the inner court three rows of hewn work and a row of beams of cedar in the fourth year hath the house of jehovah been founded in the month ziph and in the eleventh year in the month bool that is the eighth month hath the house been finished in all its matters and in all its ordinances and he buildeth it seven years chapter seven and his own house hath solomon built thirteen years and he finisheth all his house and he buildeth the house of the forest of lebanon a hundred cubits is its length and fifty cubits its breadth and thirty cubits its height on four rows of cedar pillars and cedar beams on the pillars 
and it is covered with cedar above on the sides that are on the forty and five pillars fifteen in the row and windows are in three rows and sight is over against sight three times and all the openings and the side posts are square windows and sight is over against sight three times and the porch of the pillars he hath made fifty cubits its length and thirty cubits its breadth and the porch is before them and pillars and a thick place are before them and the porch of the throne where he judgeth the porch of judgment he hath made and it is covered with cedar from the floor unto the floor and to his house where he dwelleth the other court is within the porch as this work it hath been and a house he maketh for the daughter of pharaoh whom solomon hath taken like this porch all these are of precious stone according to the measures of hewn work sawn with a saw within and without even from the foundation unto the coping and at the outside unto the great court and the foundation is of precious stone great stones stones of ten cubits and stones of eight cubits and above are precious stone according to the measures of hewn work and cedar and the great court round about is three rows of hewn work and a row of cedar beams even for the inner court of the house of jehovah and for the porch of the house and king solomon sendeth and taketh hiram out of tyre he is son of a woman a widow of the tribe of naphtali and his father a man of tyre a worker in brass and he is filled with the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge to do all work in brass and he cometh unto king solomon and doth all his work and he formeth the two pillars of brass eighteen cubits is the height of the one pillar and a cord of twelve cubits doth compass the second pillar and two chapiters he hath made to put on the tops of the pillars cast in brass five cubits the height of the one chapiter and five cubits the height of the second chapiter nets of network wreaths of chain-work are for the chapiters that are on the top of the pillars seven for the one chapiter and seven for the second chapiter and he maketh the pillars and two rows round about on the one network to cover the chapiters that are on the top with the pomegranates and so he hath made for the second chapiter and the chapiters that are on the top of the pillars are of lily-work in the porch four cubits and the chapiters on the two pillars also above over against the protuberance that is beside the net and the pomegranates are two hundred in rows round about on the second chapiter and he raiseth up the pillars for the porch of the temple and he raiseth up the right pillar and calleth its name jachin and he raiseth up the left pillar and calleth its name boaz and on the top of the pillars is lily work and the work of the pillars is completed and he maketh the molten sea ten by the cubit from its edge unto its edge it is round all about and five by the cubit is its height and a line of thirty by the cubit doth compass it round about and knops beneath its brim round about are compassing it ten by the cubit going round the sea round about in two rows are the knops cast in its being cast it is standing on twelve oxen three facing the north and three facing the west and three facing the south and three facing the east and the sea is upon them above and all their hinder parts are inward and its thickness is an handbreadth and its edge as the work of the edge of a cup flowers of lilies two thousand baths it containeth and he maketh the ten bases of brass four by the cubit is the length of the one brass and four by the cubit its breadth and three by the cubit its height and this is the work of the base they have borders and the borders are between the joinings and on the borders that are between the joinings are lions oxen and cherubs and on the joinings a base above and beneath the lions and the oxen are additions sloping work and four wheels of brass are to the one base and axles of brass and its four corners have shoulders under the laver are the molten shoulders beside each addition and its mouth within the chapiter and above is by the cubit and its mouth is round the work of the base a cubit and half a cubit and also on its mouth are carvings and their borders square not round and the four wheels are under the borders and the spokes of the wheels are in the base and the height of the one wheel is a cubit and half a cubit and the work of the wheels is as the work of the wheel of a chariot their spokes and their axles and their fellows and their knaves the whole is molten 
and four shoulders are unto the four corners of the one base out of the base are its shoulders and in the top of the base is the half of a cubit in the height all round about and on the top of the base its spokes and its borders are of the same and he openeth on the tablets of its spokes and on its borders cherubs lions and palm trees according to the void space of each and additions round about thus he hath made the ten bases one casting one measure one form have they all and he maketh ten lavers of brass forty baths doth the one laver contain for by the cubit is the one laver one laver on the one base is to the ten bases and he putteth the five bases on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house and the sea he hath put on the right side of the house eastward over against the south and hiram maketh the lavers and the shovels and the bulls and hiram completeth to do all the work that he made for king solomon for the house of jehovah pillars two and bulls of the chapiters that are on the top of the pillars two and the nets two to cover the two bulls of the chapiters that are on the top of the pillars and the pomegranates four hundred for the two nets two rows of pomegranates for the one net to cover the two bowls of the chapiters that are on the front of the pillars and the ten bases and the ten lavers on the bases and the one sea the twelve oxen under the sea and the pots and the shovels and the bowls and all these vessels that hiram hath made to king solomon for the house of jehovah are of brass polished in the circuit of the jordan hath the king cast them in the thick soil of the ground between succoth and zarthan and solomon placeth the whole of the vessels because of the very great abundance the weight of the brass hath not been searched out and solomon maketh all the vessels that are in the house of jehovah the altar of gold and the table on which is the bread of the presence of gold and the candlesticks five on the right and five on the left before the oracle of refined gold and the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold and the basins and the snuffers and the bowls and the spoons and the censers of refined gold and the hinges for the doors of the inner house for the holy of holies for the doors of the house of the temple of gold and it is complete all the work that king solomon hath made for the house of jehovah and solomon bringeth in the sanctified things of david his father the silver and the gold and the vessels he hath put in the treasuries of the house of jehovah chapter eight then doth solomon assemble the elders of israel and all the heads of the tribes princes of the fathers of the sons of israel unto king solomon to jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of jehovah from the city of david it is zion and all the men of israel are assembled unto king solomon in the month of ethanim in the festival is the seventh month and all the elders of israel come in and the priests lift up the ark and bring up the ark of jehovah and the tent of meeting and all the holy vessels that are in the tent yea the priests and the levites bring them up and king solomon and all the company of israel who are met unto him are with him before the ark sacrificing sheep and oxen that are not counted nor numbered for multitude and the priests bring in the ark of the covenant of jehovah unto its place unto the oracle of the house unto the holy of holies unto the place of the wings of the cherubs for the cherubs are spreading forth two wings unto the place of the ark and the cherubs cover over the ark and over its staves from above and they lengthen the staves and the heads of the staves are seen from the holy place on the front of the oracle and are not seen without and they are there unto this day there is nothing in the ark only the two tables of stone which moses put there in horeb when jehovah covenanted with the sons of israel in their going out of the land of egypt and it cometh to pass in the going out of the priests from the holy place that the cloud hath filled the house of jehovah and the priests have not been able to stand to minister because of the cloud for the honour of jehovah hath filled the house of jehovah then said solomon jehovah hath said to dwell in thick darkness i have surely built a house of habitation for thee a fixed place for thine abiding to the ages and the king turneth round his face and blesseth the whole assembly of israel and all the assembly of israel is standing and he saith 
blessed is jehovah god of israel who spake by his mouth with david my father and by his hand hath fulfilled it saying from the day that i brought out my people even israel from egypt i have not fixed on a city out of all the tribes of israel to build a house for my name being there and i fix on david to be over my people israel and it is with the heart of david my father to build a house for the name of jehovah god of israel and jehovah saith unto david my father because that it hath been with thy heart to build a house for my name thou hast done well that it hath been with thy heart only thou dost not build the house but thy son who is coming out from thy loins he doth build the house for my name and jehovah doth establish his word which he spake and i am risen up instead of david my father and sit on the throne of israel as jehovah spake and build the house for the name of jehovah god of israel and there set a place for the ark where is the covenant of jehovah which he made with our fathers in his bringing them out from the land of egypt and solomon standeth before the altar of jehovah over against all the assembly of israel and spreadeth his hands towards the heavens and saith jehovah god of israel there is not a god like thee in the heavens above and on the earth beneath keeping the covenant and the kindness for thy servants those walking before thee with all their heart who hast kept for thy servant david my father that which thou spakest to him yea thou speakest with thy mouth and with thy hand hast fulfilled it as at this day and now jehovah god of israel keep for thy servant david my father that which thou spakest to him saying there is not cut off to thee a man from before me sitting on the throne of israel only if thy sons watch their way to walk before me as thou hast walked before me and now o god of israel let it be established i pray thee thy word which thou hast spoken to thy servant david my father but is it true god dwelleth on the earth lo the heavens and the heavens of the heavens do not contain thee how much less this house which i have builded then thou hast turned unto the prayer of thy servant and unto his supplication o jehovah my god to hearken unto the cry and unto the prayer which thy servant is praying before thee to-day for thine eyes being open towards this house night and day towards the place of which thou hast said my name is there to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth towards this place then thou hast hearkened unto the supplication of thy servant and of thy people israel which they pray towards this place yea thou dost hearken in the place of thy dwelling in the heavens and thou hast hearkened and hast forgiven that which a man sinneth against his neighbour and he hath lifted up upon him an oath to cause him to swear and the oath hath come in before thine altar in this house then thou dost hear in the heavens and hast done and hast judged thy servants to declare wicked the wicked to put his way on his head and to declare righteous the righteous to give him according to his righteousness in thy people israel being smitten before an enemy because they sin against thee and they have turned back unto thee and have confessed thy name and prayed and made supplication unto thee in this house then thou dost hear in the heavens and hast forgiven the sin of thy people israel and brought them back unto the ground that thou gavest to their fathers in the heavens being restrained and there is no rain because they sin against thee and they have prayed towards this place and confessed thy name and from their sin turn back for thou dost afflict them then thou dost hear in the heavens and hast forgiven the sin of thy servants and of thy people israel for thou directest them the good way in which they go and hast given rain on thy land which thou hast given to thy people for inheritance famine when it is in the land pestilence when it is blasting mildew locust caterpillar when it is when its enemy hath distressed it in the land in its gates any plague any sickness any prayer any supplication that is of any man of all thy people israel who know each the plague of his own heart and hath spread his hands towards this house then thou dost hear in the heavens the settled place of thy dwelling and hast forgiven and hast done and hast given to each according to all his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou hast known thyself alone the heart of all the sons of man so that they fear thee all the days that they are living on the face of the ground that thou hast given to our fathers 
and also unto the stranger who is not of thy people israel and hath come from a land afar off for thy name's sake for they hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm and he hath come in and prayed towards this house thou dost hear in the heavens the settled place of thy dwelling and hast done according to all that the stranger calleth unto thee for in order that all the peoples of the earth may know thy name to fear thee like thy people israel and to know that thy name hath been called on this house which i have builded when thy people doth go out to battle against its enemy in the way that thou dost send them and they have prayed unto jehovah the way of the city which thou hast fixed on and of the house which i have builded for thy name then thou hast heard in the heavens their prayer and their supplication and hast maintained their cause when they sin against thee for there is not a man who sinneth not and thou hast been angry with them and hast given them up before an enemy and they have taken captive their captivity unto the land of the enemy far off or near and they have turned it back unto their heart in the land whither they have been taken captive and have turned back and made supplication unto thee in the land of their captors saying we have sinned and done perversely we have done wickedly yea they have turned back unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies who have taken them captive and have prayed unto thee the way of their land which thou gavest to their fathers the city which thou hast chosen and the house which i have builded for thy name then thou hast heard in the heavens the settled place of thy dwelling their prayer and their supplication and hast maintained their cause and hast forgiven thy people who have sinned against thee even all their transgressions which they have transgressed against thee and hast given them mercies before their captors and they have had mercy on them for thy people and thy inheritance are they whom thou didst bring out of egypt out of the midst of the furnace of iron for thine eyes being open unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people israel to hearken unto them in all they call unto thee for for thou hast separated them to thyself for an inheritance out of all the peoples of the earth as thou didst speak by the hand of moses thy servant in thy bringing out our fathers from egypt o lord jehovah and it cometh to pass at solomon's finishing to pray unto jehovah all this prayer and supplication he hath risen from before the altar of jehovah from bending on his knees and his hands spread out to the heavens and he standeth and blesseth all the assembly of israel with a loud voice saying blessed is jehovah who hath given rest to his people israel according to all that he hath spoken there hath not fallen one word of all his good word which he spake by the hand of moses his servant jehovah our god is with us as he hath been with our fathers he doth not forsake us nor leave us to incline our heart unto himself to walk in all his ways and to keep his commands and his statutes and his judgments which he commanded our fathers and these my words with which i have made supplication before jehovah are near unto jehovah our god by day and by night to maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people israel the matter of a day in its day for all the peoples of the earth knowing that jehovah he is god there is none else and your heart hath been perfect with jehovah our god to walk in his statutes and to keep his commands as at this day and the king and all israel with him are sacrificing a sacrifice before jehovah and solomon sacrificeth the sacrifice of peace offerings which he hath sacrificed to jehovah oxen twenty and two thousand and sheep a hundred and twenty thousand and the king and all the sons of israel dedicate the house of jehovah on that day hath the king sanctified the middle of the court that is before the house of jehovah for he hath made there the burnt offering and the present and the fat of the peace offerings for the altar of brass that is before jehovah is too little to contain the burnt offering and the present and the fat of the peace offerings and solomon maketh at that time the festival and all israel with him a great assembly from the entering in of hamath unto the brook of egypt before jehovah our god seven days and seven days fourteen days on the eighth day he hath sent the people away and they bless the king and go to their tents rejoicing and glad of heart for all the good that jehovah hath done to david his servant and to israel his people chapter nine 
and it cometh to pass at solomon's finishing to build the house of jehovah and the house of the king and all the desire of solomon that he delighted to do that jehovah appeareth unto solomon a second time as he appeared unto him in gibeon and jehovah saith unto him i have heard thy prayer and thy supplication with which thou hast made supplication before me i have hallowed this house that thou hast built to put my name there unto the age and mine eyes and my heart have been there all the days and thou if thou dost walk before me as david thy father walked in simplicity of heart and in uprightness to do according to all that i have commanded thee my statutes and my judgments thou dost keep then i have established the throne of thy kingdom over israel to the age as i spake unto david thy father saying there is not cut off to thee a man from being on the throne of israel if ye at all turn back you and your sons from after me and keep not my commands my statutes that i have set before you and ye have gone and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them then i have cut off israel from the face of the ground that i have given to them and the house that i have hallowed for my name i send away from my presence and israel hath been for a simile and for a byword among all the peoples as to this house that is high every one passing by it is astonished and hath hissed and they have said wherefore hath jehovah done thus to this land and to this house and they have said because that they have forsaken jehovah their god who brought out their fathers from the land of egypt and they lay hold on other gods and bow themselves to them and serve them therefore hath jehovah brought in upon them all this evil and it cometh to pass at the end of twenty years that solomon hath built the two houses the house of jehovah and the house of the king hiram king of tyre hath assisted solomon with cedar trees and with fir trees and with gold according to all his desire then doth king solomon give to hiram twenty cities in the land of galilee and hiram cometh out from tyre to see the cities that solomon hath given to him and they have not been right in his eyes and he saith what are these cities that thou hast given to me my brother and one calleth them the land of kabul unto this day and hiram sendeth to the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold and this is the matter of the tribute that king solomon hath lifted up to build the house of jehovah and his own house and milo and the wall of jerusalem and hazor and megiddo and gezer pharaoh king of egypt hath gone up and doth capture gezer and doth burn it with fire and the canaanite who is dwelling in the city he hath slain and giveth it with presents to his daughter wife of solomon and solomon buildeth gezer and beth horon the lower and baalath and tadmor in the wilderness in the land and all the cities of stores that king solomon hath and the cities of the chariots and the cities of the horsemen and the desire of solomon that he desired to build in jerusalem and in lebanon and in all the land of his dominion the whole of the people that is left of the amorite the hittite the perizzite the hivite and the jebusite who are not of the sons of israel their sons who are left behind them in the land whom the sons of israel have not been able to devote he hath even lifted up on them a tribute of service unto this day and out of the sons of israel solomon hath not appointed a servant for they are the men of war and his servants and his heads and his captains and the heads of his chariots and his horsemen these are the heads of the officers who are over the work of solomon fifty and five hundred those ruling among the people who are laboring in the work only the daughter of pharaoh went up out of the city of david unto her house that solomon built for her then he built milo and solomon caused to ascend three times in a year burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar that he built to jehovah and he perfumed it with that which is before jehovah and finished the house and a navy hath king solomon made in ezion geber that is beside aloth on the edge of the sea of suf in the land of edom and hiram sendeth in the navy his servants shipmen knowing the sea with servants of solomon and they come into ophir and take thence gold four hundred and twenty talents and bring it in unto king solomon chapter ten 
and the queen of sheba is hearing of the fame of solomon concerning the name of jehovah and cometh to try him with enigmas and she cometh to jerusalem with a very great company camels bearing spices and very much gold and precious stone and she cometh unto solomon and speaketh unto him all that hath been with her heart and solomon declareth to her all her matters there hath not been a thing hid from the king that he hath not declared to her and the queen of sheba seeth all the wisdom of solomon and the house that he built and the food of his table and the sitting of his servants and the standing of his ministers and their clothing and his butlers and his burnt offering that he causeth to ascend in the house of jehovah and there hath not been in her any more spirit and she saith unto the king true hath been the word that i heard in my land concerning thy matters and thy wisdom and i gave no credence to the words till that i have come and my eyes see and lo it was not declared to me the half thou hast added wisdom and goodness unto the report that i heard o oh, the happiness of thy men o oh, the happiness of thy servants these who are standing before thee continually who are hearing thy wisdom jehovah thy god is blessed who delighted in thee to put thee on the throne of israel in jehovah's loving israel to the age he doth set thee for king to do judgment and righteousness and she giveth to the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold and spices very many and precious stone there came not like that spice any more for abundance that the queen of sheba gave to king solomon and also the navy of hiram that bore gold from ophir brought in from ophir almug trees very many and precious stone and the king maketh the almug trees a support for the house of jehovah and for the house of the king and harps and psalteries for singers there have not come such almug trees nor have there been seen such unto this day and king solomon gave to the queen of sheba all her desire that she asked apart from that which he gave to her as a memorial of king solomon and she turneth and goeth to her land she and her servants and the weight of the gold that hath come to solomon in one year is six hundred sixty and six talents of gold apart from that of the tourists and of the traffic of the merchants and of all the kings of arabia and of the governors of the land and king solomon maketh two hundred targets of alloyed gold six hundred of gold go up on the one target and three hundred shields of alloyed gold three pounds of gold go up on the one shield and the king putteth them in the house of the forest of lebanon and the king maketh a great throne of ivory and overlayeth it with refined gold six steps hath the throne and a round top is to the throne behind it and hands are on this side and on that unto the place of the sitting and two lions are standing near the hands and twelve lions are standing there on the six steps on this side and on that it hath not been made so for any kingdom and all the drinking vessels of king solomon are of gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of lebanon are of refined gold there are none of silver it was not reckoned in the days of solomon for anything for a navy of tarshish hath the king at sea with a navy of hiram once in three years cometh the navy of tarshish bearing gold and silver ivory and apes and peacocks and king solomon is greater than any of the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom and all the earth is seeking the presence of solomon to hear his wisdom that god hath put into his heart and they are bringing each his present vessels of silver and vessels of gold and garments and armor and spices horses and mules the matter of a year in a year and solomon gathereth chariots and horsemen and he hath a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen and he placeth them in the cities of the chariot and with the king in jerusalem and the king maketh the silver in jerusalem as stones and the cedars he hath made as the sycamores that are in the low country for abundance and the outgoing of the horses that king solomon hath is from egypt and from keva merchants of the king take from keva at a price and a chariot cometh up and cometh out of egypt for six hundred silverlings and a horse for fifty and a hundred and so for all the kings of the hittites and for the kings of aram by their hand they bring out chapter eleven and king solomon hath loved many strange women and the daughter of pharaoh females of moab 
ammon adam zidon and of the hittites of the nations of which jehovah said unto the sons of israel ye do not go into them and they do not go into you surely they turn aside your heart after their gods to them hath solomon cleaved for love and he hath women princesses seven hundred and concubines three hundred and his wives turn aside his heart and it cometh to pass at the time of the old age of solomon his wives have turned aside his heart after other gods and his heart hath not been perfect with jehovah his god like the heart of david his father and solomon goeth after ashtoreth goddess of the zidonians and after milcom the abomination of the ammonites and solomon doth the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah and hath not been fully after jehovah like david his father then doth solomon build a high place for chemosh the abomination of moab in the hill that is on the front of jerusalem and for molech the abomination of the sons of ammon and so he hath done for all his strange women who are perfuming and sacrificing to their gods and jehovah showeth himself angry with solomon for his heart hath turned aside from jehovah god of israel who had appeared unto him twice and given a charge unto him concerning this thing not to go after other gods and he hath not kept that which jehovah commanded and jehovah saith to solomon because that this hath been with thee and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes that i charged upon thee i surely rend the kingdom from thee and have given it to thy servant only in thy days i do it not for the sake of david thy father out of the hand of thy son i rend it only all the kingdom i do not rend away one tribe i give to thy son for the sake of david my servant and for the sake of jerusalem that i have chosen and jehovah raiseth up an adversary to solomon hadad the edomite of the seed of the king is he in edom and it cometh to pass in david's being with edom in the going up of joab head of the host to bury the slain that he smiteth every male in edom for six months did joab abide there and all israel till the cutting off of every male in edom and hadad fleeth he and certain edomites of the servants of his father with him to go into egypt and hadad is a little youth and they rise out of midian and come into paran and take men with them out of paran and come in to egypt unto pharaoh king of egypt and he giveth to him a house and bread hath commanded for him and land hath given to him and hadad findeth grace in the eyes of pharaoh exceedingly and he giveth to him a wife the sister of his own wife sister of tapanes the mistress and the sister of tapanes beareth to him genubath his son and tapanes weaneth him within the house of pharaoh and genubath is in the house of pharaoh in the midst of the sons of pharaoh and hadad hath heard in egypt that david hath lain with his fathers and that joab head of the host is dead and hadad saith unto pharaoh send me away and i go unto my land and pharaoh saith unto him but what art thou lacking with me that lo thou art seeking to go unto thine own land and he saith nay but thou dost certainly send me away and god raiseth to him an adversary rezon son of eliada who hath fled from hadadezer king of zobah his lord and gathereth unto himself men and his head of a troop in david slaying them and they go to damascus and dwell in it and reign in damascus and he is an adversary to israel all the days of solomon besides the evil that hadad did and he cutteth off in israel and reigneth over aram and jeroboam son of nebat an ephrathite of zereda the name of whose mother is zerua a widow woman servant to solomon he also lifteth up a hand against the king and this is the thing for which he lifted up a hand against the king solomon built milo he shut up the breach of the city of david his father and the man jeroboam is mighty in valour and solomon seeth the young man that he is doing business and appointeth him over all the burden of the house of joseph and it cometh to pass at that time that jeroboam hath gone out from jerusalem and ahijah the shilonite the prophet findeth him in the way and he is covering himself with a new garment and both of them are by themselves in a field 
and ahijah layeth hold on the new garment that is on him and rendeth it twelve pieces and saith to jeroboam take to thee ten pieces for thus said jehovah god of israel lo i am rending the kingdom out of the hand of solomon and have given to thee the ten tribes and the one tribe he hath for my servant david's sake and for jerusalem's sake the city which i have fixed on out of all the tribes of israel because they have forsaken me and bow themselves to ashtoreth goddess of the zidonians to chemosh god of moab and to milcom god of the sons of ammon and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes and my statutes and my judgments like david his father and i do not take the whole of the kingdom out of his hand for prince i make him all days of his life for the sake of david my servant whom i chose who kept my commands and my statutes and i have taken the kingdom out of the hand of his son and given it to thee the ten tribes and to his son i give one tribe for there being a lamp to david my servant all the days before me in jerusalem the city that i have chosen to myself to put my name there and thee i take and thou hast reigned over all that thy soul desireth and thou hast been king over israel and it hath been if thou dost hear all that i command thee and hast walked in my ways and done that which is right in mine eyes to keep my statutes and my commands as did david my servant that i have been with thee and have built for thee a steadfast house as i built for david and have given to thee israel and i humble the seed of david for this only not all the days and solomon seeketh to put jeroboam to death and jeroboam riseth and fleeth to egypt unto shishak king of egypt and he is in egypt till the death of solomon and the rest of the matters of solomon and all that he did and his wisdom are they not written on the book of the matters of solomon and the days that solomon hath reigned in jerusalem over all israel are forty years and solomon lieth with his fathers and is buried in the city of david his father and reign doth rehoboam his son in his stead the end of chapters six through eleven recording by mark penfold chapters twelve through sixteen of the first book of the kings from the young's literal translation this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by mark penfold chapter twelve and rehoboam goeth to shechem for to shechem hath all israel come to make him king and it cometh to pass at jeroboam son of nebat's hearing and he is yet in egypt where he hath fled from the presence of solomon the king and jeroboam dwelleth in egypt that they send and call for him and they come jeroboam and all the assembly of israel and speak unto rehoboam saying thy father made hard our yoke and thou now make light some of the hard service of thy father and his heavy yoke that he put upon us and we serve thee and he saith unto them go yet three days and come back unto me and the people go and king rehoboam consulteth with the elders who have been standing in the presence of solomon his father in his being alive saying how are ye counselling to answer this people and they speak unto him saying if to-day thou art servant to this people and hast served them and answered them and spoken unto them good words than they have been to these servants all the days and he forsaketh the counsel of the elders which they counselled him and consulteth with the lads who have grown up with him who are standing before him and he saith unto them what are ye counselling and we answer this people who have spoken unto me saying lighten somewhat of the yoke that thy father put upon us and they speak unto him the lads who had grown up with him saying thus dost thou say to this people who have spoken unto thee saying thy father made our yoke heavy and thou make it light upon us thus dost thou speak unto them my little finger is thicker than the loins of my father and now my father laid on you a heavy yoke and i add to your yoke my father chastised you with whips and i i chastise you with scorpions and they come jeroboam and all the people unto rehoboam on the third day as the king had spoken saying 
come back unto me on the third day and the king answereth the people sharply and forsaketh the counsel of the elders which they counselled him and speaketh unto them according to the counsel of the lads saying my father made your yoke heavy and i add to your yoke my father chastised you with whips and i i chastise you with scorpions and the king hearkened not unto the people for the revolution was from jehovah in order to establish his word that jehovah spake by the hand of ahijah the shilonite unto jeroboam son of nebat and all israel see that the king hath not hearkened unto them and the people sent the king back word saying what portion have we in david yea there is no inheritance in the son of jesse to thy tents o israel now see thy house o david and israel goeth to its tents as to the sons of israel those dwelling in the cities of judah over them reign doth rehoboam and king rehoboam sendeth adoram who is over the tribute and all israel cast at him stones and he dieth and king rehoboam hath strengthened himself to go up into a chariot to flee to jerusalem and israel transgresseth against the house of david unto this day and it cometh to pass at all israel's hearing that jeroboam hath returned that they send and call him unto the company and cause him to reign over all israel none hath been after the house of david save the tribe of judah alone and rehoboam cometh to jerusalem and assembleth all the house of judah and the tribe of benjamin a hundred and eighty thousand chosen warriors to fight with the house of israel to bring back the kingdom to rehoboam son of solomon and the word of god is to shemaiah a man of god saying speak unto rehoboam son of solomon king of judah and unto all the house of judah and benjamin and the rest of the people saying thus said jehovah ye do not go up nor fight with your brethren the sons of israel turn back each to his house for from me hath this thing been and they hear the word of jehovah and turn back to go according to the word of jehovah and jeroboam buildeth shechem in the hill country of ephraim and dwelleth in it and goeth out thence and buildeth penuel and jeroboam saith in his heart now doth the kingdom turn back to the house of david if this people go up to make sacrifices in the house of jehovah in jerusalem then hath the heart of this people turned back unto their lord unto rehoboam king of judah and they have slain me and turned back unto rehoboam king of judah and the king taketh counsel and maketh two calves of gold and saith unto them enough to you of going up to jerusalem lo thy gods o israel which brought thee up out of the land of egypt and he setteth the one in bethel and the other he hath put in dan and this thing becometh a sin and the people go before the one unto dan and he maketh the house of high places and maketh priests of the extremities of the people who were not of the sons of levi and jehovah maketh a festival in the eighth month in the fifteenth day of the month like the festival that is in judah and he offereth on the altar so did he in bethel to sacrifice to the calves which he made and he hath appointed in bethel the priests of the high places that he made and he offereth up on the altar that he made in bethel on the fifteenth day of the eighth month in the month that he devised of his own heart and he maketh a festival to the sons of israel and offereth on the altar to make perfume chapter thirteen and lo a man of god hath come from judah by the word of jehovah unto bethel and jeroboam is standing by the altar to make perfume and he calleth against the altar by the word of jehovah and saith altar altar thus said jehovah lo a son is born to the house of david josiah his name and he hath sacrificed on thee the priests of the high places who are making perfume on thee and bones of man are burnt on thee and he hath given on that day a sign saying this is the sign that jehovah hath spoken lo the altar is rent and the ashes poured forth that are on it and it cometh to pass at the king's hearing the word of the man of god that he calleth against the altar in bethel that jeroboam putteth forth his hand from off the altar saying 
catch him and his hand is dried up that he hath put forth against him and he is not able to bring it back unto him and the altar is rent and the ashes poured forth from the altar according to the sign that the man of god had given by the word of jehovah and the king answereth and saith unto the man of god appease i pray thee the face of jehovah thy god and pray for me and my hand doth come back unto me and the man of god appeaseth the face of jehovah and the hand of the king cometh back unto him and it is as at the beginning and the king speaketh unto the man of god come in with me to the house and refresh thyself and i give to thee a gift and the man of god saith unto the king if thou dost give to me the half of thine house i do not go in with thee nor do i eat bread nor do i drink water in this place for so he commanded me by the word of jehovah saying thou dost not eat bread nor drink water nor turn back in the way that thou hast come and he goeth on in another way and hath not turned back in the way in which he came in unto bethel and a certain aged prophet is dwelling in bethel and his son cometh and recounteth to him all the deed that the man of god hath done to-day in bethel the words that he had spoken unto the king yea they recount them to their father and their father saith unto them where is this the way he hath gone and his son see the way that the man of god hath gone who came from judah and he saith unto his sons saddle for me the ass and they saddle for him the ass and he rideth on it and goeth after the man of god and findeth him sitting under the oak and saith unto him art thou the man of god who hast come from judah and he saith i am and he saith unto him come with me to the house and eat bread and he saith i am not able to turn back with thee and to go in with thee nor do i eat bread or drink with thee water in this place for a word is unto me by the word of jehovah thou dost not eat bread nor drink their water thou dost not turn back to go in the way in which thou camest and he saith to him uh, i also am a prophet like thee and a messenger spake unto me by the word of jehovah saying bring him back with thee unto thy house and he doth eat bread and drink water he hath lied to him and he turneth back with him and eateth bread in his house and drinketh water and it cometh to pass they are sitting at the table and a word of jehovah is unto the prophet who brought him back and he calleth unto the man of god who came from judah saying thus said jehovah because that thou hast provoked the mouth of jehovah and hast not kept the command that jehovah thy god charged thee and turnest back and dost eat bread and drink water in the place of which he said unto thee thou dost not eat bread nor drink water thy carcass cometh not in unto the burying place of thy fathers and it cometh to pass after his eating bread and after his drinking that he saddleth for him the ass for the prophet whom he had brought back and he goeth and a lion findeth him in the way and putteth him to death and his carcass is cast in the way and the ass is standing near it and the lion is standing near the carcass and lo men are passing by and see the carcass cast in the way and the lying standing near the carcass and they come and speak of it in the city in which the old prophet is dwelling and the prophet who brought him back out of the way heareth and saith it is the man of god who provoked the mouth of jehovah and jehovah giveth him to the lion and it destroyeth him and putteth him to death according to the word of jehovah that he spake to him and he speaketh unto his sons saying saddle for me the ass and they saddle it and he goeth and findeth his carcass cast in the way and the ass and the lion are standing near the carcass the lion hath not eaten the carcass nor destroyed the ass and the prophet taketh up the carcass of the man of god and placeth it on the ass and bringeth it back and the old prophet cometh in unto the city to mourn and to bury him and he placeth his carcass in his own grave and they mourn for him O oh, my brother and it cometh to pass after his burying him that he speaketh unto his sons saying at my death ye have buried me in the burying-place in which the man of god is buried 
near his bones place my bones for the word certainly cometh to pass that he called by the word of jehovah concerning the altar which is bethel and concerning all the houses of the high places that are in cities of samaria after this thing jeroboam hath not turned from his evil way and turneth back and maketh of the extremities of the peoples priests of high places he who is desirous he consecrateth his hand and he is of the priests of the high places and in this thing is the sin of the house of jeroboam even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the ground chapter fourteen at that time was abijah son of jeroboam sick and jeroboam saith to his wife rise i pray thee and change thyself and they know not that thou art wife of jeroboam and thou hast gone to shiloh lo there is ahijah the prophet he spake unto me of being king over this people and thou hast taken in thy hand ten loaves and crumbs and a bottle of honey and hast gone in unto him he doth declare to thee what becometh of the youth and the wife of jeroboam doth so and riseth and goeth to shiloh and entereth the house of ahijah and ahijah is not able to see for his eyes have stood because of his age and jehovah said unto ahijah lo the wife of jeroboam is coming to seek a word from thee concerning her son for he is sick thus and thus thou dost speak unto her and it cometh to pass at her coming in that she is making herself strange and it cometh to pass at ahijah's hearing the sound of her feet as she came in to the opening that he saith come in wife of jeroboam why is this thou art making thyself strange and i am sent unto thee with a sharp thing go say to jeroboam thus said jehovah god of israel because that i have made thee high out of the midst of the people and appoint thee leader over my people israel and rend the kingdom from the house of david and give it to thee and thou hast not been as my servant david who kept my commands and who walked after me with all his heart to do only that which is right in mine eyes and thou dost evil above all who have been before thee and goest and makest to thee other gods and molten images to provoke me to anger and me thou hast cast behind thy back therefore lo i am bringing in evil unto the house of jeroboam and have cut off to jeroboam those sitting on the wall shut up and left in israel and have put away the posterity of the house of jeroboam as one putteth away the dung till its consumption him who dieth of jeroboam in a city do the dogs eat and him who dieth in a field do fowl of the heavens eat for jehovah hath spoken and thou rise go to thy house in the going in of thy feet to the city hath the lad died and all israel have mourned for him and buried him for this one by himself cometh of jeroboam unto a grave because there hath been found in him a good thing towards jehovah god of israel in the house of jeroboam and jehovah hath raised up for him a king over israel who cutteth off the house of jeroboam this day and what even now and jehovah hath smitten israel as the reed is moved by the waters and hath plucked israel from off this good ground that he gave to their fathers and scattered them beyond the river because that they made their shrines provoking jehovah to anger and he giveth up israel because of the sins of jeroboam that he sinned and that he caused israel to sin and the wife of jeroboam riseth and goeth and cometh to tirzah she hath come into the threshold of the house and the youth dieth and they bury him and mourn for him do all israel according to the word of jehovah that he spake by the hand of his servant ahijah the prophet and the rest of the matters of jeroboam how he fought and how he reigned lo they are written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of israel and the days that jeroboam reigned are twenty and two years 
and he lieth with his fathers and reign doth nadab his son in his stead and rehoboam son of solomon hath reigned in judah a son of forty and one years is rehoboam in his reigning and seventeen years he hath reigned in jerusalem the city that jehovah chose to set his name there out of all the tribes of israel and the name of his mother is naamah the ammonitess and judah doth the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah and they make him zealous above all that their fathers did by their sins that they have sinned and they build also they for themselves high places and standing pillars and shrines on every high height and under every green tree and also a whoremonger hath been in the land they have done according to all the abominations of the nations that jehovah dispossessed from the presence of the sons of israel and it cometh to pass in the fifth year of king rehoboam gone up hath shishak king of egypt against jerusalem and he taketh the treasures of the house of jehovah and the treasures of the house of the king yea the whole he hath taken and he taketh all the shields of gold that solomon made and king rehoboam maketh in their stead shields of brass and hath made them a charge on the hand of the heads of the runners those keeping the opening of the house of the king and it cometh to pass from the going in of the king to the house of jehovah the runners bear them and have brought them back unto the chamber of the runners and the rest of the matters of rehoboam and all that he did are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and war hath been between rehoboam and jeroboam all the days and rehoboam layeth with his fathers and is buried with his fathers in the city of david and the name of his mother is naamah the ammonitess and reign doth abijam his son in his stead chapter fifteen and in the eighteenth year of king jeroboam son of nebat reigned hath abijam over judah three years he hath reigned in jerusalem and the name of his mother is maacah daughter of abishalom and he walketh in all the sins of his father that he did before him and his heart hath not been perfect with jehovah his god as the heart of david his father but for david's sake hath jehovah his god given to him a lamp in jerusalem to raise up his son after him and to establish jerusalem in that david did that which is right in the eyes of jehovah and turned not aside from all that he commanded him all days of his life only in the matter of uriah the hittite and war hath been between rehoboam and jeroboam all the days of his life and the rest of the matters of abijam and all that he did are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and war hath been between abijam and jeroboam and abijam lieth with his fathers and they bury him in the city of david and reign doth asa his son in his stead and in the twentieth year of jeroboam king of israel reigned hath asa over judah and forty and one years he hath reigned in jerusalem and the name of his mother is maacah daughter of abishalem and asa doth that which is right in the eyes of jehovah like david his father and removeth the whoremongers out of the land and turneth aside all the idols that his fathers made and also maacah his mother he turneth her aside from being mistress in that she made a horrible thing for a shrine and asa cutteth down her horrible thing and burneth it by the brook kidron and the high places have not turned aside only the heart of asa hath been perfect with jehovah all his days and he bringeth in the sanctified things of his father and his own sanctified things to the house of jehovah silver and gold and vessels and war hath been between asa and baasha king of israel all their days and baasha king of israel goeth up against judah and buildeth ramah not to permit any one going out and coming in to asa king of judah and asa taketh all the silver and the gold that are left in the treasures of the house of jehovah and the treasures of the house of the king and giveth them into the hand of his servants and king asa sendeth them unto ben-hadad son of tabrimon son of hezion king of aram who was dwelling in damascus saying a covenant is between me and thee between my father and thy father lo i have sent to thee a reward of silver and gold go break thy covenant with baasha king of israel and he goeth up from off me and ben hadad hearkeneth unto king asa and sendeth the heads of the forces that he hath against cities of israel and smiteth ijon and dan 
and abel beth and all chenaroth besides all the land of naphtali and it cometh to pass at baasha's hearing that he ceaseth from building ramah and dwelleth in tirzah and king asa hath summoned all judah there is none exempt and they lift up the stones of ramah and its wood that baasha hath built and king asa buildeth with them geba of benjamin and mizpah and the rest of all the matters of asa and all his might and all that he did and the cities that he built are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah only at the time of his old age he was diseased in his feet and asa lieth with his fathers and is buried with his fathers in the city of david his father and jehoshaphat his son reigneth in his stead and nadab son of jeroboam hath reigned over israel in the second year of asa king of judah and he reigneth over israel two years and doth the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah and goeth in the way of his father and in his sin that he made israel to sin and conspire against him doth baasha son of ahijah of the house of issachar and baasha smiteth him in gibbethon which is to the philistines and nadab and all israel are laying siege against gibbethon yea baasha putteth him to death in the third year of asa king of judah and reigneth in his stead and it cometh to pass at his reigning he hath smitten the whole house of jeroboam he hath not left any breathing to jeroboam till his destroying him according to the word of jehovah that he spake by the hand of his servant ahijah the shelonite because of the sins of jeroboam that he sinned and that he caused israel to sin by his provocation with which he provoked to anger jehovah god of israel and the rest of the matters of nadab and all that he did are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of israel and war hath been between asa and baasha king of israel all their days in the third year of asa king of judah reigned hath baasha son of ahijah over all israel in tirzah twenty and four years and he doth the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah and walketh in the way of jeroboam and in his sin that he caused israel to sin chapter sixteen and a word of jehovah is unto jehu son of hanani against baasha saying because that i have raised thee up out of the dust and appoint thee leader over my people israel and thou walkest in the way of jeroboam and causest my people israel to sin to provoke me to anger with their sins lo i am putting away the posterity of baasha even the posterity of his house and have given up thy house as the house of jeroboam son of nebat him who dieth of baasha in a city do the dogs eat and him who dieth of his in a field do fowl of the heavens eat and the rest of the matters of baasha and that which he did and his might are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of israel and baasha lieth with his fathers and is buried in tirzah and elah his son reigneth in his stead and also by the hand of jehu son of hanani the prophet a word of jehovah hath been concerning baasha and concerning his house and concerning all the evil that he did in the eyes of jehovah to provoke him to anger with the work of his hands to be like the house of jeroboam and concerning that for which he smote him in the twenty and sixth year of asa king of judah reigned hath elah son of baasha over israel in tirzah two years and conspire against him doth his servant zimri head of the half of the chariots and he is in tirzah drinking a drunkard in the house of arzah who is over the house in tirzah and zimri cometh in and smiteth him and putteth him to death in the twenty and seventh year of asa king of judah and reigneth in his stead and it cometh to pass in his reigning at his sitting on his throne he hath smitten the whole house of baasha he hath not left to him any sitting on the wall and of his redeemers and of his friends and zimri destroyeth the whole house of baasha according to the word of jehovah that he spake concerning baasha by the hand of jehu the prophet concerning all the sins of baasha and the sins of elah his son that they sinned and that they caused israel to sin to provoke jehovah god of israel with their vanities and the rest of the matters of elah and all that he did are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of israel in the twenty and seventh year of asa king of judah reigned hath zimri seven days in tirzah and the people are encamping against gibbethon which is to the philistines and the people who are encamping hear saying 
zimri hath conspired and also hath smitten the king and all israel cause omri head of the host to reign over israel on that day in the camp and omri goeth up and all israel with him from gibbethon and they lay siege to tirzah and it cometh to pass at zimri's seeing that the city hath been captured that he cometh in unto a high place of the house of the king and burneth over him the house of the king with fire and dieth for his sins that he sinned to do the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah to walk in the way of jeroboam and in his sin that he did to cause israel to sin and the rest of the matters of zimri and his conspiracy that he made are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of israel then are the sons of israel parted into halves half of the people hath been after tibni son of genath to cause him to reign and the half after omri and stronger are the people that are after omri than the people that are after tibni son of genath and tibni dieth and omri reigneth in the thirty and first year of asa king of judah reigned hath omri over israel twelve years in tirzah he hath reigned six years and he buyeth the mount samaria from shemer with two talents of silver and buildeth on the mount and calleth the name of the city that he hath built by the name of shemer lord of the hill samaria and omri doth the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah and doth evil above all who are before him and walketh in all the way of jeroboam son of nebat and in his sin that he caused israel to sin to provoke jehovah god of israel with their vanities and the rest of the matters of omri that he did and his might that he got are they not written on the book of the chronicles of the kings of israel and omri lieth with his fathers and is buried in samaria and ahab his son reigneth in his stead and ahab son of omri hath reigned over israel in the thirty and eighth year of asa king of judah and ahab son of omri reigneth over israel in samaria twenty and two years and ahab son of omri doth the evil thing in the eyes of jehovah above all who are before him and it cometh to pass hath it been light his walking in the sins of jeroboam son of nebat that he taketh a wife jezebel daughter of ephbaal king of the zidonians and goeth and serveth baal and boweth himself to it and raiseth up an altar for baal in the house of the baal that he built in samaria and ahab maketh the shrine and ahab addeth to do so as to provoke jehovah god of israel above all the kings of israel who have been before him in his days hath heel the bethelite built jericho in abiram his firstborn he laid its foundation and in segob his youngest he set up its doors according to the word of jehovah that he spake by the hand of joshua son of nun the end of chapters twelve through sixteen recording by mark penfold